Okay then, so at the minute, what we're doing is we're caching all of the app shell resources down here. If we take a look in the site static cache, all of these make up the app shell, right? So if a user is offline and reloads the page, they can still see this app, the app shell. Now, if they try to go to the about page, then they can't, they get this horrible error site. And the same is true for the other page. If they try to go to contact, then they can't see that because those two pages are not stored inside our cache over here. This is just the app shell, not different pages. So right now we don't actually have that much of an offline experience, do we? All a user can do is sit there and stare at the home page and twiddle the thumbs and that's not very good. So how about instead, we start to cache other pages as well. So if the user goes offline at some point, then they can browse around the site and they can go to different pages because we've cached those. Now then, I don't want to cache these in the same cache as this. We don't want to, at the beginning, when they first load up the app, go out and make tons of requests to loads of different pages as well and just cache everything. That's not typically a good approach because in the future, when they're offline, they might not even go to these different pages. So we're kind of doing it unnecessarily. We're wasting resources doing that. Instead, a better approach would be to wait until the user's online. So let's just restore the online mode. And then while the user is online, typically what they do is they browse around the site, right? They go to different pages. Now, when they go to one of these different pages, at that point, what we should do is wait for that request from the browser to get that page comes back and when we get that response from the server at that point, let's cache that. And we'll cache it in a different cache than this one because we're keeping our app shell assets separate then from any other dynamic assets. Okay, so any assets that we get from a user browsing the site while they're online. So we can store all these different pages then in a different cache. Then when they're offline in the future, we can search this cache and we can see if that other page has been cached previously. If it has, then they can still browse that page. And that makes more sense to me. So then, where are we gonna do this caching? Well, over in our service worker file, right here at the bottom, we have this fetch event listener, right? So whenever the browser or the app makes some kind of fetch request to the server to get something, then this fires. Now, if you think about it, when a user goes to another page, like the about page, we're making a fetch request from the browser to the server for that new page. So when that request, or rather when that response comes back from the server with that page, then we could cache it, right? So then at the minute, what we're doing is we're intercepting every fetch event that happens and we're returning with our own response. Now that is either gonna be from a resource that's found in our cache, and at the minute that is just our app shell assets, all the stuff that we added up here. And if it's in there, then we return that to the user, right? So it doesn't have to make that trip to the server. If it's not there, then it's gonna carry on and make that trip to the server to fetch that resource. Now this is gonna happen in the case of going out and getting another page because that's not stored in our static assets cache. So this right here, this fetch actually returns a promise because it's asynchronous. And what we could do is tack on a then method to do something when that fetch request receives a response. And we get the response in here inside a callback function. So I'll call this fetch response to distinguish it from the cache response up here. And then inside here, what do we want to do? Well, I want to take what is returned to us and store it in the cache because say for example, they go to another page about.html, it goes to the server and it grabs that resource, that page, and it comes back with this response. And I wanna take that response, that page, and store it in our cache so that if we go offline in the future, then we can still reach that page by serving it up from the cache, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is say, return, first of all, because we have to return something here at the end of the day, and we're gonna say caches.open. Now we want to store this thing in some kind of cache. Now I don't want to store it in the cache we already have. This is for app shell assets. Now I want to create a different cache and I'll call this dynamic cache like this. And I'm gonna set this equal to site dynamic and we'll start it off with V1 because we're gonna version this as well. Okay, so now if I come down here, we can open this dynamic cache 
like so. And then we want to store the response in that. Now remember, first of all, this is asynchronous. It returns a promise. So again, I can tack on a dot then method right here and we get the cache that's opened inside the callback function. So now we want to put the response that we get from here essentially into this cache. So how do we do that? Well, this time we don't use the add method like we did before up here. When we wanted to add all of the assets, we used the add all method, but we could have used the add method to add one asset. Now, we don't want to do that because we're not going out to the server this time. This method goes out to the server, gets the resource, and then puts it inside the cache. Now, we've already gone out and got the resource. And now what we want to do is just take what's returned to us and put it in the cache. So this time we use a different method and this method is called put. Again, we use it on the cache that we get back here. So we can say cache.put and this takes in two arguments. First of all is the resource URL. So much like these are the resource URLs for our static cache, we need to specify the URL when we're putting a new item in the cache. Now that is the event object dot request. Remember, this is the event object. Every time we make a fetch request, we get access to the request object on that. And then on there is a URL property, which is the resource URL, the request URL. So that's essentially the key, isn't it, inside this cache. Now, we also want to put the response. Now, the response is this thing right here. So we could say fetch response like that. Now, if we use up the fetch response here and we store it inside the cache, it means that we then cannot carry on and return the fetch response to the user because we can only use it up once. If we use it here, it means that we cannot then use it again to return it to the actual application because remember, at the end of the day, all we're doing is carrying on with the fetch request, getting the resource and then returning it to the application right? This is just something we're doing in between where we're taking that response and adding it to our cache. Now, if we add it to our cache, it's basically siphoning off the response and just putting it in the cache. And then we can't just send it back to the application itself. So what we need to do is make a copy of the response and store that in the cache and then just return the original response to the application itself so we can show it in the browser. Okay. So let's do this. Let's put our semicolons on first. And then we say fetch response dot clone. And that makes a clone of the response. So now we're not using it up here. Instead, we're just cloning it. And we're putting a clone of that response inside the cache. And we're returning the original resource. So how is this going to look like? Well, the users online, they go to another page, for example, about.html. And this fires. Inside here, we're seeing if the about.html is inside any of our caches, right? Because we're saying caches.match, and that's going to look in all the caches, not just one of them, all of them. Now, if it's already there, which at first it shouldn't be because we don't pre-cache the about.html page, but if it is there, it returns that response. Now, if it's not there, it carries on with the fetch for that request. When the response comes back, we take that response, we open up the dynamic cache, and inside that cache, we put the new response that we get for that page. Okay, this is the key, and this is the value, the response clone. So now it's stored in our dynamic cache for the future, but then the response is still returned to the application so we can show that new HTML page in the browser regardless. Now, if in the future they go offline and they try to do this again, they go to the about page at some point, then it's gonna intercept it over here, fire the fetch event, then we're gonna to look to see if we can find that request in any of our caches. Now this time we should be able to, we should find it in the dynamic cache. So even though we're offline, we can return it right here, that response, because we cached it when they visited it online. So then, let us now test this out. I'm going to save this and come over to the browser. Now, I'm going to go to service workers. We can see we have a new version waiting to activate. I'm going to skip waiting so it activates it and refresh. And now what I'm going to do is just navigate about the site a little bit. So go to the about page. I'm going to go to contact, etc. Now look at this new cache we have down here, site dynamic. 
Now, if we visit that, we can see the different pages that I've visited now, as well as these other things right here, they are now in the dynamic cache because they weren't in the static cache over here. But as we've made requests for other things that are not inside this static cache, it's now putting them inside the dynamic cache after we've initially requested them while online. So this is being populated as we navigate about the site and do different things, right? So now what if we go to the home page and then if we go to service workers and go to offline mode, refresh. Now we still get the home page that always worked, but previously we couldn't go to another page. But if we try that now about boom, now we get the about page and the same should be true for the contact us page. Awesome. So now we have these different pages working in offline mode and that is freaking awesome. We can essentially browse all of the app while we're offline.